What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am Nicholas. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fancy Football BDGE. It is Friday, and every Friday throughout the summer, we are doing a 2019 fantasy football mock draft on draft.com. Shout out to David and the boys over at Draft for the hookup with the merch. We're going to be doing some giveaways with some of the t shirts that he sent over. These are uh, size large for you big girls out there. Uh, we got a black one, we got a gray one, this blue one is sticking with me. Anyways, sorry, let me get to the point here. We're going to be doing a muck drift on the draft app, and it's almost draft season, people. Uh, so y'all need to start prepping for your fantasy football drafts this year, and the literal single best way to do that is by going on the draft app, going to draft.com, signing up. If you use my promo code BDGE when you sign up, you will get $3 to draft with. Where are you? Friday's YouTube film. There we go. Okay, so I have the third pick. We'll get into the settings of this league in a second. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but that's, you know, how uh, how we work over here at the HQ. Stop yelling. It's fucking Friday. Tuck your shirt in. Uh, I have the 103 pick. So in honor of the E-Town Get Down League, Drafting in a couple weeks. That is the high stakes league that myself, Snacks, and Animal playing together. This is the 11th year in existence. We had our league meeting yesterday and we kind of vlogged and uh, did the whole video capture of the behind the scenes of what the league meeting looked like. That was on yesterday's video. So if you want to go back to yesterday's video on the channel, go do so. Um, we picked our draft order. So I will be drafting from the seven spot and it is a 10 team league. So I decided to do a 10 team draft for today. This is half PPR, one quarterback. No kickers, no defense. That's the way that Draft.com rolls. I'm telling you, there is no better way to prep for your draft than to get on to Draft.com or the Draft app. Download it. Add me. This is my username right up here, Nick Ercolano. You got to do it through the phone if you're going to add me as a friend. Download the Draft app, iTunes, Google, add me, and I will invite you to all the drafts that I start throughout the week, and I start a lot of them. It's hard to get in, though. I'll be honest with you, man. There's a lot of, I, I, got, I think I got like 750 or 800 friends on here. Everyone's trying to get into the drafts, but if you do, I mean, you could always enter ones that are from the public and practice with other people, but here's the thing. They're all like a dollar minimum, so if you use the promo code BDGE, you'll have $3 to draft with, plus add in 10 bucks when you deposit it. You'll be able to do 10 drafts before your actual draft, and you will feel damn good. So anyways, Squam Barkley went to 101, Christian McCaffrey 102. I went with Kamara at the 103, and uh, I actually... I'm starting to love Kamara. I'm starting to fall in love with Kamara. I think, I think realistically, he's one of the safest. He's probably he might be the safest pick in fantasy football this year. The more I think about it, um, you know, you could say that his efficiency is is hype. He's like hyper efficient. You could say that you know it's he's not getting the usage that C Mac or Barkley or these top guys get, but they use him to the point where it's not fluky. You know, he is. Number two, last year he was second in the NFL in red zone carries, in 10 zone carries, in goal line carries. He was sixth in the entire NFL among wide receivers, among tight ends, in red zone targets. So it's not fluky that he scores 14 touchdowns his rookie year or 13, whatever it was, and then 18 last year. It's because they know how to utilize him and they know where to get the ball in his hands. And they do that so well. And on like 33% of his snaps last year, he was lined up either out wide or in the slot. So they use him from a receiving standpoint, like, flawlessly. So I love Kamara at the top of the draft, and I'm thinking about drafting him over guys like um, C-Mac and Barkley. We'll get back to that in a second. So I'm up with my second pick. We had Kamara first, and I have a choice between the two guys I'm looking at right now are James Conner and Mike Evans. James Conner I'm not in love with. I, I do think he's going to lose some passing down work, but if he keeps dropping to the end of the second, the early third, which I've seen him do a few times... I would probably push the button on him, um, and I'm probably going to do so because the mid-round wide receivers are just so um, such great value there. I really like Mike Evans, too. I think he's going to go back to that target share that we saw prior to Deshaun Jackson being in Tampa Bay, where Mike Evans was amongst the league leaders normally, you know, like 165 to 170 targets. And if he's back up there, he's going to be one of the best wide receivers in fantasy football again. So... We had Damian Williams. I'm going to talk about that. T.Y. Uh, Hilton, Todd Gurley go off after uh, Mike Evans. So I'm sitting here, um, and for me, I'm, I'm just going to grab Carrion Johnson and move along with my day. I like him as my 
third running back or flex play or second running back. I didn't realize I just went with three running backs in a row. But, you know, just pay attention to the player analysis. Um, and if at any point you enjoy the video, all I ask is that you hit that thumbs up button. We'll do the draft guide giveaway maybe after my – or uh, we'll do the – we're going to do a draft guide giveaway as well as T-shirt giveaways. So you'll have three chances to win stuff. Um, we'll do that maybe after my fifth, fourth and fifth round pick. So T.Y. Hilton, um, he can no longer be an early third round pick, or this would be a second round pick in a 12-team league. He can't, you, you can't take him that early because of Andrew Luck. We don't know exactly what's going on with Andrew Luck, but we know it's not good. Um, and I have Dr. Jesse Morris coming back on the channel. I believe if you're watching this on Friday, we're filming tomorrow. We're going to go over some of the running back injuries. We're going to go over Andrew Luck and talk more in depth about that. So that video will probably be live on Monday, maybe Wednesday. We'll see. Um, the problem with Luck is that it's looking like he's probably going to miss games. If he misses any time, that is a monster downgrade to everybody in that Indianapolis Colts offense. I'm talking about T.Y. Hilton. I'm talking about my beloved Marlon Mack, Eric Ebron, Devin Funches, everybody. If Andrew Luck is not on the field, this team is nowhere near as good as they would be with Andrew Luck on the field. Less plays overall, less leading the, you know, winning, right? So that hurts Marlon Mack, of course. Less scoring opportunities, which hurts everybody. It's just, it's not a good thing, right? You have to downgrade everybody. So T.Y. Hilton, Marlon Mack both easily fall out of the third round for me right now as it stands because I do expect Andrew Luck to, um, to miss games. And I want to talk about OBJ is dealing with a hit pointer. So OBJ was someone I was slowly starting to creep up in my rankings, and I had talked about him a lot in the beginning of the season about how, you know, everyone knows the upside. He has wide receiver overall one in his range of outcomes, of course, but my concern was always his injury proneness, if you want to put it. I don't, I don't know if he's injury prone, but he's dealt with a lot of injuries so far in his career, and they're always like lower leg and soft tissue and these muscle injuries down low, and those are concerning for me, right? Because those are the things that linger, especially having injuries at this point. I, if a player gets injured, if a player has an injury that's like semi even serious, it's just a muscle strain or whatever, midway through August, that usually drops him pretty far down my draft board. Um, OBJ, they said, you know, Freddie Kitchen said if it was a regular season game, OBJ would probably suit up. So it looks like they're being very precautionary and it's probably not that big of a deal. I believe someone on Twitter, one of the doctors that I follow said it's a one to two week recovery for him so if they let him sit for the next two weeks and he's 100 percent we're back to you know liking obj at the end of the first round but again it's a reminder of what his risk is right he is one of the riskier guys that you take in the top three when you have a uh, Devonte adams deandre hopkins julio jones all of which suit up for nearly every single game they play in and perform at a very high level so he's still my wide receiver four maybe my wide receiver five depending on how serious this injury is we saw melvin gordon drop to the fourth round that would be a third round pick in a 12 team league but um, the way I look at it is Melvin Gordon, Zeke, the further they get into the summer without a contract or a trade or whatever they want over there, the further you need to drop them down draft boards. As far as I'm concerned, uh, Zeke needs to be off the first round. He needs to be out of the first round. And I know a lot of people are optimistic about it happening, but why? Why are you optimistic? We haven't seen, they didn't get a contract done with Dak. They haven't got one done with Amari Cooper. And those are definitely their two most pressing concerns. Tony Pollard looked good. Um, Mike Weber has looked fine. So they're going to be able to hand it to other running backs besides Zeke if they think that that's the move for them. So um, with that being said, Zeke is out of the first round for me. I'm just not taking that risk. If he does hold out, if he does sit out, like I'm not going to be the one that uh, takes him and then has him riding my bench. So there are less risky picks, you know, at, at six or seven. Get one of those elite wide receivers instead of having Zeke possibly sit on your bench. I just don't want to take that risk. All right, so we're sitting here in the fourth round, and this is exactly why I'm happy going with my three running backs, because now I don't really have to worry about the position for a long time. Um, but Brandon Cooks is still sitting there, right? Wide receiver 12 last year. I'm of the belief that Cup is not going to be 100%. If you watched my must-own stacks video on Wednesday, I went in-depth on why I like both Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods. And you know what? If Robert Woods falls to me right now, I'm going to scoop his ass. If this was a few weeks ago, prior to the Derrick Henry injury, I would like Derrick Henry in the fifth round. However, that calf strain is a lot more serious than many people imagine it to be. Hey, let's go. So Robert Woods falls to me. Again, y'all, I am uh, very much 
okay with going with Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks. They were the wide receiver 10 and the wide receiver 12 last year. They were that ranking as well, even on the games where Cooper Cup was on the field. So I don't care if he's on the field, if he's off the field, if he's less than 100% on the field. I love both these guys. I think it's going to be their show in 2019. Jared Goff just threw up 4,700 yards. And since this is best ball, if you guys are joining me for the first time, draft.com, they're not exactly mock drafts. They're called they're called best ball drafts. So what you do is you you draft a large roster. It's 18 teams, 18 rounds. Again, no kickers, no defense. You only start one quarterback, you only start one tight end, you start two running backs, three wide receivers. It automatically starts the best performing players each week at those positions. So that being said, some guys, yes, are definitely a little bit more valuable, like a Deshaun Jackson is a little bit more valuable, and some of the pass catching backs, when you don't actually have to decide when to start them, because it automatically does that for you, become a little more valuable. But as you can see, most of the draft picks are exactly in line with the value of how players are drafted in season-long leagues. So it's still very, very good practice, and you can join these. This is a dollar draft. So yes, there's people, whoever finishes in the top three does win money. Um, so if you Go on to draft.com, you use my promo code BDGE, and you draft, you'll get $3 on top of the $10 that you deposit, and you'll have a ton of drafts, and people who obviously put a dollar down, even if it's just a dollar, take it seriously, because it is money, and in this economy, shit's real out here. Um, What else do we got? So if we're pivoting away from like a Marlon Mack or something, I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all in on Aaron Jones. I know he was dealing with a hamstring injury, but he's back at practice and he is inserted right into the RB1 spot again. And I was looking at some, um, some Vegas odds because I'm writing up my Monday video today, my top 10 overall rankings because there's been a lot of shifts as of recently. I'm looking at the rushing yard over under from Vegas. This is on DraftKings Sportsbook. If you just type in DraftKings Sportsbook online, on Google, you'll be able to find this. You don't have to have a username or sign in or anything. It's free to access. Aaron Jones, they have it at 1,025 rushing yards. I love that. That is good news for me because he's going to be the main pass catcher there. So if he can add 400 or 500 yards to what Vegas projects him to have about 1,000 yards rushing, he might have 1,500 yards from scrimmage. And uh, and I'm all in for an Aaron Jones. The fact, I'm really surprised they had him at 1,000 rushing yards for their Vegas over-under. I thought it was going to be closer to 900 maybe like 875. I'll tell you why that's significant in a second. Um, all right. Oh, Calvin Ridley still on the board at the end of the sixth round. Yeah, you can give me all of that. Um, and we've talked about one of my favorite things in the world to do in best ball, and it gives you a higher percentage chance of winning. And relating to my video on Wednesday, my must own teammate stacks for this year is stacking quarterbacks with wide receivers or quarterbacks with tight ends. And since I have Woods and Cooks, I am absolutely going to be targeting Jared Goff with one of my later picks, probably the eighth or ninth round pick. I'm not going to pick him in the seventh round, obviously, because there's still a lot of good quarterbacks on the board and I'm not going to jump the gun. I might actually look for Deshaun Watson or Aaron Rodgers. You could see Andrew Luck's ADP fell pretty far. Um, there's still good players on the board here. I, now I kind of wish I didn't go with tight end so early. I mean, running back so early because there's a lot of running back depth here. What I think is going to happen, I know, like, I feel like the hate for Lindsey has gone too far. He was someone that I was telling people to avoid early on in the offseason only because his ADP was like the fourth round. He was really getting picked really, really early, but now he's going much later. I know this is a 10-team league, not a 12-team league, but to be able to get him in the seventh round now is a steal because what I think is going to happen, right? We have Rick, Rick Ch, Scandrello coming over, who is a Kyle Shanahan descendant, learned under him for a long time. Um... He's going to use this Lindsey Freeman duo as a one-two punch. We already saw it in the first preseason game, and this is coming out on Friday, so there were definitely preseason games last night that might uh, change my opinion on some players, seeing who runs with the first team and things like that. But um, Philip Lindsey is going to get plenty of carries. That's fine. I don't want him to have the full workload. I want Freeman to get the short yardage work, the goal line work, the, uh, you know, a lot of the, the running. That's fine. If they can use Lindsey more as a pass catcher, right? He only had like 30, 35 receptions. I believe he had the lowest reception total for any fantasy running back that finished within the top um, the top 12 running backs last year. We'll pull that up. This is a great website, by the way, FF Today, just to look at stats. So if we go to running backs, um, Philip Lindsey. Okay, he finished as running back 13, but I think if you go points per game wise, or that was actually standard. So if we go to maybe half PPR. So he was running back 12. He had 35 receptions, 
Um, and that was uh, outside of Kareem Hunt because he only played in 11 games. That was the single lowest total of any of the top 12 running backs. So he wasn't actually that involved. You might think of him as a guy who's involved in the passing game a lot, but um, that wasn't the case last year. And I think they will get him a lot more involved because you know that Kyle Shanahan offense, that scheme gets the running backs involved in the passing game early and often. And Phillip Lindsay, I mean, look, his, his best comparable player is Deion Lewis. His college target share was almost 15%, 93rd percentile. So it's not like he's a bad pass catching back. He is a very good one. They just didn't utilize him in the correct way. And I think what's going to happen is he's going to be much more of a PPR factor this year. So Lindsay, yes, I was off him early on in the year because he had the injuries he was dealing with. It was a new coaching staff. But now most of those concerns have been pushed back, right? We already saw him running with the first team. So the coaching staff is not a concern. Um, he's fully healed from the injuries. So that's no longer a concern. But early on in the offseason for a fourth, fifth round pick, that was too much for me. So um, I like Lindsay there. Now we have four running backs, three wide receivers. Let's see who else we are looking at. So, I, uh, yeah, like as I said before, Andrew Luck was a guy that I was liking to invest in in like the seventh-ish round, but no longer, obviously, because if he's missing games, he's not off the draft board, but not until like double-digit rounds now. All right, I promise we'll do the giveaway after this uh, after this pick. Or, you know what, I'll, I'll state the question for you so you can go do it whenever you want. I want to know, all you got to do is drop a comment down below. What is your favorite fantasy platform that you use, what is it, whether it's your high stakes league or it could be your favorite one um, in just a random league that you play in? Whatever it is, I want to know what your favorite platform is, Yahoo, ESPN, Flea Flicker, Sleeper, and why. So drop that comment down below. You'll automatically be entered to win one of two t-shirts plus a draft guide, which I'll give away on next Friday's video. So we are on the end of the eighth round, and I am still looking at wide receivers uh, most of the value at tight end is kind of gone. Will Fuller, I don't hate, but he's still eight months removed from the ACL tear. I'm going to go with my boy MVS. I've been hyping MVS. He's my must draft player in the eighth round in my draft guide, which you can cop on bigdogsdraftguide.com. It's got all of my rankings. Oh, I'm not even logged in. Shouldn't have cleared my cookies and catch. Um, it's got all of my rankings, my big board, broken down by position, broken down by tiers etc etc it's got all this stuff on the top menu you can see sleepers busts must draft players injury reports by dr morse uh, exclusive articles and all of my favorite resources you know I, i'd be whipping out a lot of crazy big facts throughout these videos and here are all of the resources that i use to gather them so that is a huge article in there that a lot of people are digging now, my question becomes, do I wait? Yeah, Jared Goff is all the way down the ranking, so I could probably wait until my next draft pick to snag him. Um, so I'm probably going to do that. Eric Ebron, David Njoku. I'm going to grab Njoku. I feel like the Njoku hate might have gone a little bit too far. Um, oh, he held out of Monday with a knee injury. I actually didn't know that. Nick, what the fuck are we doing over here? Drafting players with knee injuries. I wonder if it's serious. I haven't heard shit about it. If you're enjoying the video, please make sure that you hit that thumbs up button, guys. It lets YouTube know that you enjoyed the video and other people can find me and then I can make some money and actually feed my children. I'm just kidding. I don't have any fucking children, thank God. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Bold take. I have a feeling David and Joe is going to be fucking traded before week one. El Perineum, you're out of your fucking mind. I haven't seen any, there's nothing on Twitter about his knee injury. Is this fucking fake news? Oh, no. All right, well, regardless, I mean, David Njoku is one of the most explosive players in the NFL. His metrics, his athleticism is crazy. I know he hasn't really shown any consistency, but with Baker there, I think we're going to see more consistency. This offense is going to be much better overall, a lot more plays, a lot more snaps, a lot more passes overall. Um, OBJ dealing with the injury, Antonio Callaway suspended four games. Like, who knows what kind of role David Njoku can find himself in. It, you know, the floor is definitely not that high, but the ceiling is very, very high. So for someone that's dropping into the ninth, 10th, 11th round, um, I like the upside that David Njoku actually provides you. Okay, so again, back to the giveaway. Um, what is your favorite fantasy football platform that you play on now, that your high stakes league is in, that you have played on before, but maybe you don't play on anymore? So I want to know that. Is it Yahoo? Is it ESPN? CBS? NFL.com? Sleeper? Flea Flicker? MFL? <coughs> I can't imagine MFL is your pick unless you're playing in a very customizable dynasty league. But I'm, I'm curious as to know what the majority of people 
actually uh, enjoy playing on. So my favorite one right now is definitely between Sleeper and Yahoo. Sleeper for Dynasty for sure. Um, they're getting better and better and better. Um, but Yahoo is probably right up there with my favorite season-long platform. So answer that below and you will be automatically entered to, um, to win one of those. All right, so we're starting to see a little bit more of the quarterbacks go off. We had Baker Mayfield. Ah, that was the only one, actually. Um, so, again, why I fade the running backs is because we have guys like Deshaun Jackson and Larry Fitzgerald and Dante Moncrief sitting here in the 10th, 11th, 12th round. Deshaun Jackson is my highest owned wide receiver in best ball. He just went off the board. Kenyon Drake, ooh. So Kenyon Drake was in a walking boot. Um... And they said they are hopeful for him to be ready for the start of the season. That's not good. When a player gets injured at this point in August, you're hoping for something like what they, what Freddie Kitchen said about OBJ. You know, if it was a regular season game, he would suit up. He'll be back in a week. He'll be back in a week or, you know, a week and a half. That's what you need to hear right now because we are so close to the start of the regular season. So that makes me very, very, very nervous for Kenyon Drake. Thus... Him being on the board in the 10th round makes a lot of sense. Oh, you motherfucker, Smitty. Smitty. Smitty just sniped the fuck out of me. That was the only player I really, really wanted. Jared Goff, you, I'm fucking blocking you. I'm reporting you for fucking spam, harassment, uh, assault, brother. So he just sniped the shit out of me, and now I'm flustered, and I don't know what to do. Um, and I'm scared, and I'm going to pick Matt Breida. Where the fuck are you? Is he already off the board? Nope, he's not. Matt Breida is the single best best ball pick in drafts right now. Yes, I just took Matt Breida ahead of Kenyon Drake. Jerick McKinnon, like, probably isn't even going to play this year. This backfield is going to be split up between Tevin Coleman, Matt Breida. Matt Breida is the best talent in this backfield. He's a tough motherfucker. I don't care if he gets injured because he's going to play through it. Matt Breida is the single best value still in the 10th, 11th round of every single fantasy draft. I don't care what format it is. Dynasty leagues, season-long leagues, best ball leagues, you name it, he is the best value. Ugh, I'm so mad about him taking Jared Goff. Like, Smitty, I legit don't like you as a person anymore. Not that I even knew. I don't even know who the fuck you are, and you probably won't even comment down in the video below, but I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm big upset right now. Um, so now you left me flustered and I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson because Lamar Jackson is the single best quarterback pick this year in fantasy football. If you play in a one quarterback league, he has a ridiculous amount of upside. We're underestimating just how much rushing work he provided us last year and the Ravens. I'm going to make sure this thing is still recording. Yeah, we good, baby. Um, Lamar Jackson led the NFL quarterbacks with basically every rushing statistic there could be and he started for seven games if he plays the full 16 Lamar Jackson is going to run the ball 150 to 175 times he's going to beat Mike Vick's record of a thousand and whatever it was 35 rushing yards for a quarterback and he is going to dominate fantasy leagues and if he doesn't if you're in a one quarterback league this is why he is the best pick because his floor is so high but his ceiling is even higher and if he doesn't work out, just drop his ass, all right? So Lamar Jackson, one quarterback leagues, easy cop in the 10th or 11th round. Superflex, I'm a little bit more nervous about him. Wow, so Ronald Jones is still going higher than Peyton Barber. People, stop doing that. Stop. Stop taking Ronald Jones before Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber played eight of the 12 first-team snaps. This is a same thing that we saw last year before Peyton Barber just started playing 95% of the snaps. We'll see it happen sooner rather than later. Peyton Barber looked really good in that first preseason game. No one wants to say it. I'll be the one to say it. Wow, he really stacked both Tampa Bay running backs. Uh, very questionable. I guess I don't really hate it, but, I mean, what if, ha what if what happens last year happens again this year? Then you just kind of wasted two picks. When it comes to best ball, I, do ne I almost never stack um, running backs. I don't go for Hank. I don't play for a floor. In a season-long league, I play for floor, right? Because all you got to do is get within the top four places or top six places if you're shooting for the playoffs, and then you're in the dance. And once you're in the dance, anything can happen. So you want that floor. You want safety and consistency throughout the entire year. If your running back gets hurt, you have someone that could step in. For best ball, I'm shooting for upside. You need to score a shitload of points if you're getting any return on your investment. So I do not do handcuffs. I do not do backups. Um, where are we at, though? Devin Funches. I, ah, fuck, I have a lot of Devin Funches shares, but now that luck might miss time, it kind of scares me. 
I like Anthony Miller as a somewhat breakout candidate. I hate stacking guys with quarterbacks that are super inaccurate, but Miller playing from like the slot and not running a lot of downfield um, routes makes him uh, an easier option to trust. However, he is dealing with a sprained ankle, I believe. I don't think it's that big of a concern. Um, I'm more concerned with like muscle strains and um, those kind of injuries at this point in the preseason. So I'm, I'm going to go with Anthony Miller right here and kind of pray. It's probably not a, uh, something I would suggest for you guys to do, drafting a player that's injured. But with ankle sprains, you know, usually um, they'll heal pretty quickly if they're not high ankle sprains or anything like very like grade two sprains. Yeah, I'm a fucking doctor. Oy, oy, oy. So, if you have not already done so, literally open a new tab. Or if you're on your YouTube, if you're on the app on YouTube, pause the video, minimize it, go to the Google Store or the Apple Store, type in Draft, download it, sign up, enter my damn username once you sign up, enter my promo code BDGE, you'll get $3 to draft with, add me on there, and we will we'll be fucking boys after that. We'll become best friends, and we'll draft together all the time. Any value left at tight end? Uh, I'm good there. Uh, yeah, I'm, like, really in a bad mood because he took Jared Goff. The stacking is incredible in best ball. It gives you a much higher win percentage. And on games where they blow up, like, that's that's such a big advantage for you. So, also, you know, uh, I should have taken Deion Lewis. He's my favorite there. But Deion Lewis is another great value because Derrick Henry is dealing with this, ham or this calf strain that – you know, should take him anywhere from three to six weeks to return and something that can linger all season long and he might re-injure it or have compensation injuries. Deion Lewis is a tremendous value. He's still going to catch so many passes. And if Derrick Henry misses time, he's going to get a lot of the running workload there. Naeem Hines, though, right? I've been talking about if Andrew Luck misses time, every skill player takes a hit except for Naeem Hines. Naeem Hines will be the one player that benefits because he will be on the field more. He's a player that he did next to nothing when they were leading last year or when Marlon Mack was healthy. If that's not the case, if they're not leading all the time, if they're not always winning, then Naeem Hines will get a lot more work. So I've started to take Naeem Hines in the 13th, 14th round of best ball drafts because, again, it's almost time to start fading, uh, fading the Colts offensive players, unfortunately. I mean, I'm not completely fading them, but I, I just mean at their current ADPs. Like, Marlon Mack and T.Y. Hilton, you can't do it in the third round. Because we saw what Hilton's ceiling with Jacoby Brissett is what he did in, what, 2016? It was like 900 or 1,000 yards. And that's fine, but not. you'd rather have a third-round pick with more upside. We don't know what's going to happen with, with Andrew Luck. It could, and you know what? He could be ready for week one. I doubt it. He could miss two weeks. He could miss eight weeks. He could miss the entire year. I don't know. But the risk has to be factored in there. Um, Marlon Mack, I mean, this is this is not going to be the worst offense. They're still going to be a very, very, very good offensive line. So they're going to open up holes. And with Brissett under center, I mean, they're still going to go run heavy, right? You don't want Brissett throwing the ball 38 times a game. So Marlon Mack should still get plenty of work, you know, 15 to 18 carries a game, which means he's definitely still on the RB2 radar, but he doesn't have anywhere near the upside he had. So he moves down for me. He was like my 18th overall ranked player. I think he's moved down to about 30th. Um, so he becomes like a, a fourth round pick pretty much um, for me. And I would probably prefer other players. I would, in the fourth round, there are a lot of really nice wide receivers like Stefan Diggs falls there sometimes, Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay. I would probably take those guys over Marlon Mack at this point. Um, so he's probably a better fifth round pick than I would assume a fourth round pick, which is where he'll probably go regardless of the luck injury. So it's always pivot season, baby. You love... ADPs, not players, all right? That is the lesson to take away. As much as I love Marlon Mack, y'all know that. You got to be realistic, and you got to pivot. So that's what your boy is doing. Wide receivers, meh. I guess we'll grab my second quarterback, um, Phillip Rivers, Josh Allen, Jimmy G. The reports out of Jimmy G's camp are fucking not looking good. Dante Pettis working with the second team, which means he doesn't really even have a good wide receiver um, to work with. So I usually think these mid-round quarterbacks are usually just as good as the weapons that they have. And I think Philip Rivers has one of the best supporting casts in the NFL in terms of his weapons. So with that being said, Melvin Gordon looks like he's going to miss some time as well, um, which will probably lead to higher passing 
volume for this Chargers offense. So uh, I wasn't really high on Phillip Rivers, really, because, I mean, he always finishes the year as like a top, top 12 overall quarterback, but points per game is usually at quarterback 15 or 16, and that is not good. For a one-quarterback league, you don't want a guy who's averaging fifth, like the 15th or 16th most fantasy points per game Um because that's, that's kind of how you lose your league. you much rather have a Lamar Jackson than a Phillip Rivers. I mean, look at his game lines. 331, that's great. But then 160, 176. Um, and it's only because he stays healthy. That's why he finishes above these guys in overall. Now, Dallas Goddard. Um, he was someone I was targeting pretty heavily in the 12th, 13th round of drafts. However, he is also dealing with a calf strain. So just like Derrick Henry, that is a big injury for Dallas Goddard. And that might hamper his entire sophomore season. Which means upgrade to Zach Ertz. He becomes a good third round pick again. So we have two quarterbacks. I'll probably lay off quarterbacks for now. Um, I'm probably going to end off with wide receivers. I really don't like Jameson Crowder. He guy can't stay healthy, but he looked really good in the preseason game. He's running with the ones as the slot receiver. He caught multiple balls from Sam Darnold on the only drive that the team sustained. And all the reports out of camp are very, very, very positive about Crowder. He seems to be like the guy that Sam Darnold is leaning on early and often, and um, that might be Chris Herndon when Chris Herndon comes back, but he's out for four games, which means Jameson Crowder could eat for the first four games of the season and then become, you know, more of a role player. Either way, though, um, the the reports are good. Crowder's a, a nice, young, talented player. He's had his share of injuries, but he's also had the opportunity to showcase who he really is. I, I think we've kind of seen it, but if Jameson Crowder in the 15th round is going to get you you know, 70 receptions for 800 yards and, you know, four or five touchdowns, I'm fine with that. As opposed to guys like Golden Tate who are going to miss time. Traquan Smith, who is all hypothetical upside, and we haven't actually seen him do anything on the field. Kenny, I want nothing to do with Miami wide receivers. I've said this like multiple times over the last few videos. But we have Kenny Stills arguing with the front office about some shit. We have Devontae Parker, who you literally haven't heard anything about since they were practicing in shorts back in May. You have Albert Wilson, who's literally also not even practicing with the, first, uh, with the team yet. He's coming back from that major surgery on his hip, I believe it was. So I wouldn't be surprised if he misses like a huge portion of the season. It's really just Preston Williams, to be honest with you, at the end of uh, the Miami depth chart. So it is no Miami wide receiver season. And I will grab Mohamed Sanu if he's left to me in the 16th round. He's dealing with a sore knee. Why the fuck is every single player hurt this offseason? There's been no major injuries but, like, I've, I feel like the majority of skill players are are dealing with a hamstring strain, a calf strain, a fucking, let me get a fucking number one, are dealing with, like, all of these random injuries. It's really, it's really pissing me off. It's really stunting my draft strategy. Um, speaking of Chris Herndon, though, I like TJ Hawkinson and Chris Herndon. I don't have a tight end, too. I think he's an ultra-talented player, and I think he would have broken out in a big way had he not got suspended, but you're still going to get 12 games out of him. He keeps dropping to the, the... We're in the 16th round. Chris Herndon and TJ Hawkinson are still on the board. I lied. TJ Hawkinson is no longer on the board. T, ah, fucking mother... Uh, you know what? It wasn't It wasn't Smitty, at least. I got to stop cursing. I'm really sorry if you're listening to this with your children. I'm not sorry because you knew what you were getting into, but it's just a me problem, it seems like. So now there's no tight ends I want on the board. God damn it, because Trey Burton, he's hurt. Jack Doyle, I'm pretty sure he's hurt. Or Andrew Luck is hurt. Tyler Eifert, he's not hurt right now, but he will be hurt soon. Darren Waller is fucking hurt. He's active as he's been since suffering a shoulder sprain. So he's got a shoulder sprain. Oh, God damn it. You know what? I kind of don't hate Noah Fant. He was targeted really often in that first preseason game, and I think that's what we're going to see. His hands... He needs some work on his hands. He's going to drop a lot of passes this year, but if the volume's there, I'm okay with him as my tight end too because I think he'll. I think this is a reasonable projection right here. 40 receptions, 63 targets, 455 receiving yards. That's not bad for a rookie. I don't hate that. Given the other players around here, it's really, 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 really not good. Um, you know who else I really like? It's like a tight end sleeper, and I think I actually might take him with this pick right here depending on what value is left on the board. Yeah, I'm going to go with actually John Brown or Muhammad Sanu here. I'm really upset because I had a lot of stocks in Robert Foster, but he ran no plays with the first team offense in their first preseason game. Hopefully this week is a little more telling. He looked good when he got in there, um, but you know, reports out of camp where that Foster was running s exclusively with the second team. Um, John Brown seems to be you know the clear number one on the outside there, but I just don't trust Josh Allen. He did not look good in that first preseason game. He's still throwing the ball erratically down the field. So give me Muhammad Sanu with a sore knee. I don't give a shit, to be honest. 
I'm just fucking throwing money down the gutter at this point, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, so I'm okay with... Uh, I probably should have went Debo. Good pick, Smitty. Nah, fuck you, Smitty, actually. We're not on speaking terms. Um, Gerald Everett. So... In the Stacks video I did on Wednesday, talking about Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks, which just put me back in a bad mood because I knew I don't have Jared Goff anymore. <sighs> don't let Stacks ruin your day. Don't let Smitty or Stacks ruin your day, all right? That's the key takeaway from this video. What the fuck was I saying? Oh, well, one of the things uh, I mentioned in my analysis of Cooper Cup was, let me bring up the blog post. Oh, also, if any of you guys tuned in for the show I did on the Fantasy Sports Network, the FF, the FBB, I forget what the fucking show is, Frank Stample and Greg Sussman, uh, Sussman host it. I will be going back into Manhattan on Wednesday to do a live stream show with them again, so stay tuned for that. Uh, most of us own stacks. Cooper Cup, you fraud. So, Evan Silva said, Robert Mays went to Rams camp and observed a major emphasis on increased multiple tight end sets. Infl implemented would be good for Gerald Everett. That is correct. Um, and a way for the Rams to manage Cooper Cup coming off the ACL. Now, when you look at Gerald Everett, man, I, he hasn't really gotten that much run. He doesn't get a lot of opportunity. But if he did, he's a guy who definitely has the upside to be explosive. Um, he's got the size of like an inline speed kind of guy. 6'3", 240. 4'6", 240. Very, very fast for the tight end position. He has second-round draft capital. He's only 25 years old. Look at the burst score, agility score, catch radius. 85th percentile spark score. College dominator in the 90th percentile. Very, 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 very good. So if he does break out this year, don't be surprised because we said it here first, baby. So he might be my third tight end on this list here. Probably going to grab him. We have seven wide receivers. We have two running backs. We have... Two quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, Phillip Rivers. I would think about stacking it with a third quarterback because I don't know how how good I feel about having Lamar Jackson and Phillip Rivers. Like if, if Lamar Jackson gets hurt from running the ball so much, then I'm just left with one quarterback, and that's a big killer to the team. But um, we're still going to go with Gerald that route for the brand. Again, y'all, right after this video, Make sure, one, you scroll down and hit that thumbs up button. Two, comment your favorite fantasy platform. Three, go to draft.com, sign up using promo code BDGE. This is the single best way to prepare for your upcoming fantasy football drafts. All right. My final pick is going to be Henry Krieger Koble, the GOAT. I wish. I'm going to pick him next Friday in my mock draft. I'll pick Henry Krieger Hold me to that. He's going to be my 18th round pick. Um, so that is the final squad. We have Alvin Kamara, James Conner, and Karen Johnson, and Philip Lindsay, and Matt Breida, and Naeem Hines as my running backs. That is a solid fucking running back crew. Wide receivers, Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, Calvin Ridley, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Anthony Miller, Jameson Crowder, Mohamed Sanu. Quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, and Philip Rivers. Tight ends, we have David Njoku. We have Noah Fant, and we have Gerald... Everett. Um, so I like the I like the way this team worked out actually, despite me getting absolutely sniped and not going in in terms of capital on quarterback or tight end. This is the first time I think I went with three running backs off the rip. I typically don't do that. I'm also typically I feel like in the beginning of drafts, if you have a first, second, or third overall pick, uh, the way the drafts kind of work out this year tend to fall in line with getting really good value at running back. Like usually, not anymore, not Nick Chubb, but. A lot of times you'll get one of those first three or four running backs. And then with the second pick at the end of the second round, a lot of the times one of, you know, James Conner, Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb fall to you there. And then in the beginning of the third round, you'll have your opportunity to grab Karen Johnson or Aaron Jones or what was, you know, Damian Williams or Derrick Henry before their injuries and whatever the fuck is going on in their camps. So it seems like early on in the draft, you have an opportunity to go really hard on running backs, which I don't hate because there's not a lot of depth at the position. But I kind of wish I would be re I would feel really good about my team had I gotten Jared Goff over Lamar Jackson just to stack and give me that upside on a weekly basis with the best ball. Um, but I don't, I don't hate the wide receivers at all. I think between Cooks, Woods and Calvin Ridley, I'll get, you know, top 15 performances out of at least two of the three guys pretty much on a weekly basis. But uh, let me know what you think about the team. Go 
drop your comment about the, uh, your favorite fantasy platform and I will automatically enter you into the giveaway. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing mock drafts every Friday, but we have videos coming out every single day throughout the week that'll help you prep for the draft. For your draft, players to target, players not to target, to stay away from, all that kind of nonsense. And I will see y'all uh, on Monday, I believe. So have a, have a fantastic weekend. Hope y'all drink a shitload of margs. And goodbye.